Also, uh, Buddhism, as it spread in Japan, including into samurai society, did not displace uh, native religion. Uh, today we think of native Japanese religion as Shintoism, uh, as a uh, network of um, rather uh, well-defined uh, network of shrines uh, across the country, uh, uh, basically big shrines and uh, branches of them everywhere. Um, and something that is very coherent and something that has a uh, religious organization that is very distinct from society, but also from other religions such as Buddhism. Uh, that's really a modern development. Uh, during the medieval period and during the early modern period, uh, traditional religious beliefs in Japan uh, were uh, incorporated uh, into Buddhism uh, and adapted to Buddhism, uh, and Buddhism really adapted to them, uh, so much so that you can talk about a phenomenon uh, that we call syncretism. It's kind of the blending of religious elements of different religions uh, that uh, maybe uh, blend into a complete uh, different third religion, or as I think is more accurate in the Japanese case, uh, kind of uh, become commingled but yet remain somewhat distinct. Um, but nevertheless, uh, where one religion does not come in and displace others, as we are familiar with uh, throughout the history of the Western world, certainly. Um, you know, there was no sense that local gods were demons. Uh, in fact, local gods in Japan uh, were incorporated very often into the Buddhist pantheon. Uh, as all sorts of Buddhas, there's the original Buddha, there were also other Buddhas. Um, they all had their different uh, spiritual properties. We'll get into that when we talk about different kinds of Buddhism during the Kamakura period. Uh, but uh, basically, uh, as um, local gods became uh, Buddhas, or they became Bodhisattvas, Bodhisattvas are interesting beings. Uh, they are enlightened people, or they are people who are um, so uh, close to becoming enlightened that they can achieve Buddhahood, they can achieve Nirvana, they can achieve complete enlightenment if they choose to, but instead they are uh, filled with such compassion that they will stay and help other people on the mortal plane uh, become enlightened first, and then they will complete this process of enlightenment and escape the cycle of death and rebirth. Um, and uh, this native Japanese religion uh, that we can call Shinto, I guess, for lack of a better term, but with the understanding that it was not a separate religious organist, not a separate organized religion, um, uh, Shinto in many ways, um, elements of Shinto belief, uh, fit very well with Buddhism. Um, for example, there were just, there were a lot of <laughs> different gods uh, in Japan. Uh, it was an animist religion, um, uh, Shinto was, uh, or a set of beliefs, once again, not really a religion, uh, but um, prominent features of the landscape were thought to be gods, you know, mountains, uh, rivers, certainly. Um, interestingly shaped rocks, trees, uh, and people could also become uh, gods after they died. Uh, in fact, many emperors are regarded as being gods. The imperial line is said to descend from the sun goddess. Um, it, but uh, really, it, it's not uh, that much of a stretch uh, to say that, yes, these people are, are gods, and therefore, uh, in the Buddhist tradition, uh, we can see them as holy, as bodhisattvas, as Buddhas. This guy, for example, Atago Gongen, uh, the uh, Jizo Buddha, uh, a Buddha, uh, but uh, here in this statue he's manifested as Mount Atago, as the god, as a spirit of a mountain. So the spirit of a mountain and a Buddha are the same here in this statue. And until the late 19th century, when the, uh, the Meiji government, the first post-samurai government, um, forcefully separated uh, Shinto from Buddhism for reasons which we'll talk about later. Uh, until that time, you really had a situation where uh, gods, um, or I'm sorry, where holy spaces uh, used to have both Buddhist and traditional kami worship, that is Shinto, aspects to them.